to those older people like myself, there's something magic that happens when you have grandchildren and you have no idea that's going to happen. Right. You'll experience this one of these days, but when they, when they are born and they come into the world, it's like magic. You know, if you have a garden, what's the one thing you plant? Tomatoes. Did I hey, win? We should have done that. No, on we should have. <laughs> we should have done that on the Family Feud night. See, I got that one. Oh, it is. No. Oh, kiss my aster. You gotta be kidding me. A perennial party. A perennial party. Charlie Stocker will come and host it for you. Give him a call. <laughs> and you harvest the beans off of the castor plant, correct? Well, yeah, more or less. Uh, the castor plant is the most deadly plant known to man. You, you've heard of ricin? Yeah, yeah. That's what ricin is made from. It's I hard. hope we don't get in trouble on television. <laughs> and Brenda has a now. question for you. Oh, Brenda did have a question. Of course, we've got our favorite Monday guy here, Charlie Stocker. Well, you didn't say that when Bill Bussing was in. Wait, well, I know. Don't tell him. You're, you're, you're our Monday guy, though. We see you every Monday, and we always look good forward to it. good to see you. It. Yeah. Charlie is teaching us how to plant straw bit. Straw bale garden. Straw bale garden. It's like a strawberry garden. <laughs> Somebody that gets back, you don't even have a chance to get back to her because she gets back to you every week. Oh, my girl. She's my here. My girl from Petersburg. Teresa. Teresa! <laughs> They're my heroes. They're my heroes. <laughs> All right, guess what? Miles G, we're done. Tell them bye. Bye-bye. Oh, well, Charlie, great. Charlie, Charlie. Oh. I, I think it's 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 it kind of starts to set in as we look back at the, some of those moments because um, that was a good you know representation of Charlie. That, mm -hmm. That's who he was on camera and off camera when he was in this building with us over the last few years. His laugh is something I think I'm going to miss the most. It, oh it, it just, when he laughed, it just yes. made you laugh, right? Like he's always yes. up to something. Whenever he laughed, it's right. like in the back of your mind, he's up to something. Something is on his mind, and he's going to oh. you know, rock our world, which he did so often. And, and you know, during COVID, we couldn't have people in studio, so Charlie would do the Skype uh, mm -hmm. thing with us. And there was one time we couldn't get him on Skype. And so I call him and goes, Joe, I'm online. I, I'm online. I said, no, you're not, Charlie. You're not online. I don't see you. And he goes, well, it says it can't load the operating system. What can I do? I said, the computer is dead, Charlie. <laughs> he got a new one after he that, got I a think. Didn't he go out and get yeah, a new, a new computer? And then he couldn't get his printer to work. So I went to his house, and I fixed his printer and got that going for him. He goes, Next time I'm gonna, cause, well, I had to owe him. He he aerated my front lawn, so I had I had no choice. I had to go fix his printer for him. Yeah. <laughs> one of the stories I remember most most fondly, it's just so funny. One that Ron and I tell all the time is Charlie came in. We always love to talk about college football. We love to pick which teams right. are going to win big games each week. And Charlie came in a couple of years ago and said, Georgia, that's the team this week. That's the team you want. They're going to win this game. And Georgia did not win. And the next week, he picked another team. That team is going to win. I, I know I, I didn't get it last week. Well, three weeks in a row went by, and he got it wrong each week. So the third week, he comes in, and, and Ron gives him grief. And, and then we realized all three teams played Notre Dame. He just picked against Notre Dame three weeks in a row. So we figured out really recently, at oh that, that moment, like for some reason, at least that year, Charlie was not a big fan of Notre Dame. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. But he would always speak to everyone. You yes. know, sometimes people come in here... Maybe they just are busy or they don't have time to talk to everybody, but Charlie always made it a point to speak to everyone in here and have a genuine conversation. You know, everybody's on their phone these days, not Charlie. He's looking at you mm -hmm. directly, having a great, and he remembers, he remembers next time to, to talk to you about this or that. Or, and he just always seemed generally interested in the process of how we do TV. Sure. He was always watching the behind the scenes and in front of the camera. He, I think he really just liked the production aspect of this as well. One of the things that uh, I was thinking about this morning driving in is what an encourager Charlie was. It uh -huh. won't surprise you because he's always so enthusiastic, but off camera he would always have a word of support mm -hmm. or an enthusiastic uh, kindness for mm -hmm. every one of us. I mean, yeah. there was just a genuine love and friendship, and that I'm certainly going to miss in a very personal and deep way. He was just a bright light in our world. You know, the, uh, our former Lifestyles host uh, that you replaced, um, she put on Facebook a couple of days ago, and I, I read it was a very nice post. and It was lovely. It yes, was lovely, Laura and Kirtley. when I read it, I thought, you know what, she's exactly right. The things that she talked about with Charlie, she said, and I, I visually can see this, our studio door is just, it's a normal 
normal-sized door, but she said he would bust in with the hugest mum you could buy <laughs> or whatever it is, yeah. balancing a dozen donut yes. bank donuts <laughs> and walking that door, and no matter how we were on air, you would still hear, good morning, because yes. that's how are you? How are you? Right you? Yeah. And then when you're in break, he'd say, what you doing this weekend? But he would get on the edge of that seat and just focus on you. And yes. you were the only thing he cared about at that moment is right. what you're doing for that weekend. So mm -hmm. true. I think it's unbelievable still. I know to us that he's not going to be walking in that door yeah. today or anymore. It's hard to, hard to come to grips with, isn't it? Well, his death yeah. was such a shock to us, and we haven't even really processed that yet. And the reality of that whole, you know, Charlie always said, everybody's replaceable. Put your hand in a bucket <laughs> of water, pull it out, and you can see that water rushing right in there. Well, as Ron said, in this case, he was wrong. Wow. He is irreplaceable. Yep. And in every way, not just here, but in all of the organizations, uh, the friendships, the work that he's done, he's irreplaceable. I love talking with him about the West Side. My first time living here, I lived on the West Side for five years. So he's Mr. West Side, oh, yes, you know, West Side <laughs> Nut Club, yeah. and proving the West Side, beautifying it, and so great to have that connection with him to talk about the impact he made, not on this community as a whole, but also on the West Side as well, what he did for them. I think it's nice to share the impact mm -hmm. he had on us, and we, we want you to, to let us know the impact he's made on you over the years. Mm -hmm. We know some of you called in several times to, to ask for his mm -hmm. advice, and he was always there to give it to you. So we, we, we're going to have the, the phone lines open coming up at about 20 minutes or so. Joe knows this phone number by heart. Joe, if you want to give everybody the phone number, we're going to open it up and you can call in and we'll let you talk to Charlie or about Charlie and yeah. what he's done, done for you. Get that pen and paper ready because I'll say it again. 270. Okay. 827 7961. We'll put the phone number up here in just a minute as we kind of come to grips with, with, with losing our friend Charlie and we'll be talking more about it uh, this, this hour.